Hi, today's coffee lecture is dedicated to fake news, again. We talked about how to identify them and why we are psychologically susceptible for them. We really would like to stop talking about this mess, but it's up to date as ever. So let's try an ethical perspective on fake news. First of all, let's narrow down what we mean with the term fake news. I'd like to be adamant about this phenomenon not to be called fake news. Here, we see the BBC's Corrections and Clarifications webpage. It publicly rectifies journalistic errors. In Germany, the media are lawfully obligated to report truthfully unless unmistakingly indicated, as in opinion pieces or satire. Since nobody's perfect, There is an error management culture based upon national civil law. In summary, it is extremely risky for the traditional media to intentionally spread false information. Another example is the myth of spinach's nutritional value with respect to iron. In fact, considering Popeye, there are two clarifications. One, fresh spinach is not particularly rich in iron. Dried spinach, however, can absorb it. A significant oversight in an otherwise upright study. 2. Popeye never claimed to eat spinach for its iron content, but its abundance in vitamin A. Again, this example roots in an honest mistake. It's not fake news. In a third example, we rule out misunderstandings that attract the media's attention. When Margaret Thatcher died in 2013, this hashtag caused quite a stir among fans of the singer Cher. The artist herself learned about her own death in the media. Finally, we take a look at a meta-example, countering the intentionally spread false claim that 5G mobile networks are in any way linked to the transmission of the coronavirus, the World Health Organization staged an awareness campaign. This project actually fights fake news. The first step in philosophy is to define the research subject, which almost never succeeds in general. The attempt to define the term knowledge constituted a whole discipline within philosophy. Especially defining politically charged terms is heavily contested. There are characteristics of fake news, though, scholars of philosophy and media science can agree upon. Intentionally distorted or outright false news are published on seemingly traditional and legitimate channels. But the term is also used to discredit unfavorable media coverage. We won't consider this last aspect for now. Legally, the vast majority of fake news is carefully constructed to be protected under Freedom of Speech and Freedom of Information Acts. Ethically, however, it is worth discussing their legitimacy. In order to evaluate fake news from this perspective, we consider fake news as an act. An act consists of intent, its execution and its consequences. Our main focus is the question whether fake news are right or wrong, good or bad. But as we all know, the answer is in the eye of the beholder and sometimes rather fuzzy. As a rule of thumb, practical philosophy is mostly a journey in foggy landscapes Intent is covered by the category of ethics of ultimate ends. The execution of an act is the main focus of deontological ethics and consequentialism examines the results, meaning the responsibility of intended or accidental outcomes. Less abstract, we consider three actions of concrete people. Someone creating fake news, a consumer of fake news, and somebody who spreads fake news. First, we look at statements concerning the production of fake news. In this case, the justification is plain anger. Being spiteful may lift the burden of heavy emotion. At the same time, misery loves company. The ethics of pursuing one's own pleasures and minimizing suffering is called hedonism. This might be a valid explanation here, lacking sophistication though. Even less congenial, but more fitting, seems to be the theory of ethical egoism, which, in summary, states that an act is moral if it serves one's own rational interest. The most prominent representative of this position is the controversial US-American writer Ayn Rand. 
In her novel Atlas Shrugged, she proclaims an environment of unregulated capitalism where a person is morally measured at successfully exploiting her skills. Rand's position may seem alien in Europe, but in America we meet this thinking almost everywhere. Man forges his destiny, the pursuit of happiness, everyone gets what they deserve. So, Fostering one's own interest in this particular case may not seem relatable, but is considered morally sound according to ethical egoism. The author of this quote feels herself driven to act by exigent circumstances, as a legal practitioner would say. She feels the responsibility to right a wrong committed by others. Max Weber introduced an ethics in which we act according to the responsibility we are willing to take for consequences. Alas, this is quite tricky, because we might be willing to accept only the responsibility of an intended outcome, but not of the side effects. This is an extremely helpful mindset for superiors or supervisors. Utilitarianism denotes a whole family of consequential ethical theories and might fit best in this case. It aims at maximizing not only one's own well-being, but the whole community's, and minimizing pain and suffering respectively. Here, the act itself is not morally judged, but its beneficial result. Thus, producing fake news in order to restore a country's integrity, reputation or well-being is morally sound in a utilitarian's view. The same holds if the indicated goals in this quote serve the community. The interesting detail is the role of the sub-worker whose job it is to fabricate fake news. In a way, he rejects the responsibility for his deeds. Thus, the motivation can be considered detached from the content, earning money for the family, for example, which is a classical utilitarian motive. A motive we've encountered earlier is conviction, especially the conviction to follow a virtuous path, be it honesty or valor, is a strong moral compass. Virtue ethics may seem a bit old-fashioned, Indeed, the best-known virtue ethics is Aristotle's two-millennia-old Nicomachean ethics. But every era and society implicitly defines its own virtues and vices. This internal sense kindles the urge to do what's right. A close relative is deontological ethics. Its best-known derivative is Immanuel Kant's categorial imperative – where we shall strive for doing our duty and our duty being what's right. Well, in a nutshell at least. Putting emphasis on the second sentence, we might advocate for a modern and a bit naive interpretation. The consensus theory of truth dates back to the last century with Jürgen Habermas as its main representative. It can be summarized as constructing a truth for phenomena that do not have an empirical notion of truth by themselves, but by the power of argument. What does that exactly mean? It doesn't mean that the result of one plus two is open for discussion. It is a consensual truth that libraries contribute to a community's cultural well-being. This statement is hard to prove or refute by facts alone. Instead, we rely on a wide acceptance. How does that apply here? As I said, I take an idealistic stance on this. Assume a skeptical person just wants to add another perspective or unpopular facts and arguments to the general discussion. Now, leaving all naivety aside, we enter the power game full throttle. This candid motivation to use fake news as a weapon to achieve one's political goals is a textbook example for Machiavellianism. It legitimizes almost all means to gain or sustain political power. This is a very simplified summary, mind you. The actor is not human per se, but a state's agent. That's why it is detached from the familiar and cozy concept of individual or collective well-being. Instead, It takes the perspective to optimize governance, which in turn is a necessary premise to shape the lives of its subjects. Now let's take a look at consuming fake news. Again, we take an extremely naive perspective by assuming they just seem so plausible. 
educating oneself in world affairs may then be justified as a virtuous act. Another interpretation for the same action might be the aforementioned consensus theory of truth. Now, this is the boldest claim I make. If my personal prospects and the world in general go south, I might find consolation and validation in fake news. The sole motivation being joy and happiness. Eudaimonia is not as superficial in satisfying one's current needs only as propagated by hedonism, but it longs for a fulfilled life in harmony and bliss. In this case, we get emotionally involved in favor of a person close to us. This might be the best example for Habermas's ethical theory on a small scale. Reading, watching or listening to fake news in order to discuss them with a friend or relative and ideally becoming wiser together. It might seem odd misanthropic Schopenhauer would advocate for compassion, but fear not, it'll turn out to make perfect sense. Compassionate behavior, according to him, is a gesture that shows that we share our existential suffering. Here we go, pure Schopenhauer. More modernly, we use the term empathy nowadays. Sometimes the driving force is plain hedonistic voyeurism. With a little more subtlety, consuming information from a broad variety of sources to cultivate an open mind may be the underlying intention here. Especially cosmopolitans deem it their obligation to be up to date on global events. Thus, it might be excused with a hazy understanding of deontology. The last action in the wake of fake news is spreading them. One of the most frequently given reasons to share fake news consciously is some kind of payback, particularly getting back at the elites, as it were. Vindication is commonly attributed to hedonism when it comes to low self-esteem. This shouldn't be a surprise. Fortunately, we won't encounter ethical egoism again, at least not in the scope of this film. On social media channels, Fake news might not even be relevant with respect to content, but as a means to generate attention, which can be translated into pleasant appraisal or even money. Hence hedonism again. We've seen a corresponding statement from the creator's point of view. This scenario, accordingly, shares the same reasoning. Sharing fake news in order to warn about them is a slippery slope at best. It's the same with irony. There is always a person who doesn't get it, or it is prone to Chinese whisper. Apologies for the colonial expression. Nonetheless, the intention is kind and compassionate, so we refer to Schopenhauer's ethics of compassion. With a small twist, the statement could also be read as an invitation for discussion. Sharing the fake news item plus appending one's own arguments or contextualizing it conforms to the idea of of the consensus theory of truth. Rushing through selected ethical theories in about 15 minutes is offensively crude, and what we are left with is a gut feeling that this whole fake news business is mostly immoral after all. So what can you do on a small scale? On a factual level, we can always rectify fake news, preferably with verifiable facts from reliable sources. Also, sharing fake news is prone to misunderstandings, so we advise against it. It might seem a bit geeky, but you could actually have a good time researching interdependence of the media landscape, not only obscure sources, but the so-called mainstream media in particular, just to be prepared for debate. And finally, do not just use fake news as a derogatory term. Even more important is the emotional level. It is about Schopenhauer's compassion after all, it seems. Fake news are not the cause, but a symptom of social estrangement. So be sceptical, absolutely, but kind. Do not secretly try to push your own goals. Try to be honest about your own motives. Is it about being right, or is something at stake? How can all involved parties save face? And if the situation threatens to turn into a fight, Be honest about that too. Summarized, 
perhaps fake news that only pass pro toto for a strained society. Behind fake news there is almost always anger, frustration, hate, or at least calculation. Instead of fighting fake news, ignore them and fight that. So yeah, fake news are a nuisance, but as soon as actual people are involved, argue with your brains and have a heart.